Okay, magandang uh, umaga po sa ating lahat. O magandang araw po. So, welcome po sa ating uh, in-house review na pa facility po ng ating uh, pamantasa. No? Ang Nueva Asia University of Science and Technology sa, pamunga, sa panguna po ng ating uh, College of Education Department na pinangunahan din po ng ating dekano na si uh, Dr. Angelica D. Cortez. So, ako po nga pala si uh, Sir Ray Cabuan at ako po ang magtataguyod sa ating review ngayon na uh, naka-focus po sa curriculum planning and development. Okay? So, sana po, kahit sa konting pagkakataon ay nabigyan ko ng justice, no? Ang pagbibigay uh, ng uh, konting kaalaman sa inyo tungkol sa curriculum planning and development. Okay? So, wag na po tayo magtagal at bilang pagpapatuloy, ito na po ang ating question number one. So, in a broad sense, which of the following statements refer to the curriculum? Okay, so pakibasa lang po natin ng uh, maayos sa ating mga mata. I do not need to, uh, I do not need to uh, read them one by one, all the choices. Ano po sa palagay natin ng ating sagot? So, uh, which of the following statements refer to the curriculum? Okay. Let's now move in to the answer. Okay, the correct answer is the totality of the learner experience from the moment uh, of his waking to falling asleep. So, uh, we have been learned or we have actually learned what curriculum is. No? So, curriculum actually is a standards-based sequence of planned experiences where students practice and achieve proficiency in content and applied learning skills. So, curriculum therefore is also the central guide for all educators like you, your prospective educators and teachers as to what it is essential for teaching and learning so that every student has access to rigorous academic experiences. So, uh, curriculum really is the totality of what you have learned the moment you wake up from falling asleep. So, did you get the right answer? Okay. So, let's proceed to the question number two. If Mrs. Cruz's conception of curriculum is cumulative tradition of organized knowledge, the curriculum is categorized as what? Is it process, content, experience, or reality? So again, if Ms. Cruz's conception of curriculum is cumulative tradition, of organized knowledge, the curriculum is categorized as okay. The correct answer is experience. So definitely, all the changes that occurred in the learners is due to their school experiences. So these are what we call the so-called learn uh, learn curriculum, and it is also the kind of curriculum that a learner absorbs or makes sense of as a result of his interaction with the teacher class fellows or classmates or even at the institution okay so uh, how many of you got the correct answer as the saying would always tell us experience really is the best teacher okay number three so which is not a psychological basis for curriculum so growth and development of learners viewpoints about knowledge to be learned theories and loss of learning or maybe the nature of the learning process so make your choice or make your decision now so which is not a psychological basis for curriculum so the correct answer is the viewpoints about knowledge to be learned so through education efforts are actually made for bringing desirable changes in the behavior of the learners according to the uh, psychological point of view. So not only that, it also provides basis for curriculum development in such a way that curriculum could be developed according to the children in a particular grade and their needs. That's why when you're talking about not a psychological basis, when you're just talking about the viewpoints, actually, those are only about perceptions of uh, Okay, uh, the learner somehow or the knowledge that's actually uh, acquired or achieved by a particular learner. Okay? 
So, number four. What does sociology contribute in uh, most curriculum planning? So, definitely, uh, sociology is uh, a social science that actually deals no, with uh, interaction. And interaction is, uh, interaction process really is the most important part that, that uh, you know, sociology can uh, really uh, contribute, no? in uh, a variety of ways to the development of the learner or somehow in the crafting of the curriculum so what could be the possible answer what does sociology contribute most in uh, curriculum planning is it nature of aims learning process relevant content then teaching method okay the correct answer is the nature of aims so the sociological aspects of the curriculum affects the development of the curriculum in what sense there are actually uh, certain factors which intervene in the curriculum development process due to cultural uh, beliefs and societal expectations we have values we also have the norms and traditions emanating from the background of stakeholders that's why when you are into the process of curriculum planning you need to consider about the nature of aim so why are you uh, say for example in the field of uh, or in the aspect of crafting a particular topic to be shared so what could be uh, you know your purpose or what could be the intended purpose or aim no, of that kind of topic or content that you would like to share okay with your learners so definitely you have to consider first the nature so what are you trying to uh, develop in the students is it more on the psychological, sociological, or maybe more on the other aspects no? of development of all the learners? Okay, so the answer there is nature of aims. Let's proceed to number five. So, which of the following is an example of an aim? Okay, so A, develop patriotism and nationalism, perform long division of numbers, interpret the various map symbols enjoy folk music okay so you have your choice now so which of the following examples is not an aim okay so uh, or rather it's not an aim it's an aim okay i'm sorry that was a big mistake for sir Kabal or Amer an error for sir Kabal is an example of an aim Okay, so the correct answer is, okay, to develop patriotism and nationalism. So, uh, when we talk of aim, definitely it uh, may pertain to a purpose or intention. So, there are broad descriptions of purposes or ends stated in general terms without criteria of achievement of mastery. So, the curricular aims or goals relate to the educational aims and philosophy. So, they are programmatic and normally do not delineate the specific courses or specific items of content so coming up with this kind of uh, aim really would uh, develop sense of you know love of country or s a love of country and even you know giving more importance to how they'll be able to uh, you know contribute no to nation building so if you are a nationalist and a patriotic individual by the way you are this kind of person I would want, uh, you know, something good. Not only something good, but uh, you want the best, really, for your country. Okay? So, this kind of uh, aim actually provides high-quality teaching experiences. Which excite and motivate children also in the classroom and beyond. So, uh, you know, elicit or to actually manifest how they will be able to love or to actually show their concern for our country. Okay? So, the correct answer is A develop patriotism and nationalism number six so which what is the crucial function of an aim because from time to time no when we are even constructing our lesson plan we need to go into the aims of the objective so in terms of education and even in curriculum development we have also uh, that kind of uh, activity no, that we're doing talking about uh, formulation of aims goals objectives and others okay so which could it uh, which could it be guide instructional processes or process guide education guide curriculum development or guide evaluation process so crucial function of an aim 
Okay, have your trace now. What's the correct answer or what's your or what's your answer? Okay, the answer is okay, letter C, that's guide curriculum development. So uh, I, I would like to uh, enumerate to you the different functions of curriculum uh, of curriculum rather in education. So one is development of uh, individuals, then producing responsible citizens, develop basic uh, skills, no? then preservation and transmission of cultural heritage. So therefore, when you're actually into the process of, uh, you know, uh, looking into what could be the best thing that you can uh, actually uh, incorporate or write in your lesson plans or even in your uh, plan of activities so you need to actually consider this aim as we mentioned a while ago what could be the intention or what could be your purpose of coming such with uh, you know coming such uh, aims or objectives so when you're into the process of uh, doing that uh, then aims really you know can guide one in the curriculum development so curriculum development actually does not only confine to subjects listening to subjects but it also adds up to the idea of, uh, you know, uh, coming up of uh, lesson objectives, then uh, selection of content, organi organization of content, and among others, will so fall part under that kind of curri curriculum development. So, when you're into uh, curriculum development, then guiding, uh, guiding you will be the kind of aim that you are going to, uh, you know, incorporate. As I mentioned a while ago, to stay or to include no, in your lesson or topics or content. Okay? So, uh, going back, uh, question number six, answer is letter C. Okay, number seven, which is not a statement of a goal? So, now the question is a negative uh, statement or question that actually asks us what is not or which is or which of the following actually identified A, B, C, D, or A, B, C, or D is not a goal. Understanding others, developing a mental and physical health, interpret value, uh, various map symbol, uh, symbols, and developing uh, basic uh, skills. Okay. The correct answer is letter A. So understanding others really is not uh, a goal, no? Because uh, when you are defining goals, curricular goals are they are actually broad. Uh, they are actually general statements of what, okay, department or program that will actually do to provide uh, students with the desired knowledge and skills, and what students will do so that they are gain or that they actually gain uh, desired knowledge and skills. So. When you are understanding others, I mean you understand others after it's a specific okay, uh, aim or objective. So therefore, the correct answer for number 7 is uh, letter A. Understanding others is not a statement of a goal. Number 8. As an instructional planner, which will you not include in your list of objectives? in your language curriculum pacing guide in the lower primary read the part that answers given question b read the uh, references to get information letter c read with proper enunciation and posing and uh, letter d all the three are objectives okay so as an instructional planner which will you not include in your list of objectives in your language curriculum pacing guide in the lower primary okay so the correct answer is read references to get information so what are the language objectives so language objectives actually are how the students will show what they are learning so again no learning objectives or so language objectives actually are how the students will show what they are learning. So, they are focused actually on the four domains of speaking, listening, reading, and writing. So, we have here the ELP or the English Language Proficiency uh, Standards. And we have also the, y, uh, the WIDA or the WIDA no? or the WIDA or the World Class Instructional Design and Assessment Standards are actually sources of language objectives. So, Read uh, references to get information is not part of this, you know, language uh, curriculum pacing guide. Okay, so 
So again, the correct answer is uh, letter B. Read references to get information. So number 9 is somewhat uh, situational. So Dr. Buena Seda is a curriculum developer. So which is the correct sequence of tasks involved in the curriculum or in the development of curriculum? Okay. So letter A is formulating goals and objectives, B assessing needs, C selecting appropriate instructional materials, D selecting and organizing content, and letter E evaluating uh, effectiveness of learning and instruction are the different steps not presented there. So which could be the correct sequence? Is it the 1, A, B, C, D, and E only, or B, B, A, D? C and E only or number 3 B A C D and E only or number 4 A B C D and E only okay again so Dr. Boyna Seda is a curriculum developer and he would like to go into the process of you know uh, engaging okay the curriculum that he is going or she is actually going to plan in accordance to the proper sequencing what could be the proper sequencing in this real, uh, in this aspect okay one two three and four okay you are given uh, 30 seconds okay so what's your uh, choice so the correct answer is uh, number two. So that is first, you need to assess the needs. Then you have to formulate goals and objectives. Then after that, you need to select and organize your content. Then uh, after that, you have to uh, okay, select appropriate instructional materials. Then uh, after that, we are going to evaluate effectiveness of learning and instruction. So you can actually go over to uh, you know uh, your uh, textbook note that we have used in uh, your subject before curriculum, uh, curriculum planning and development, the teacher and the curriculum, or even curriculum development by uh, published also by the Lorimar uh, Publishing House or company. Okay. Number 10. So when Professor A ruled out some topics in her syllabus because they are trivial, which criteria for selecting content is she applying? May I repeat? When Professor A ruled out some topics in her syllabus because they are trivial, meaning they are no longer that uh, important, so which criteria for selecting content is she applying? A. Appropriateness B. Balance C. Significance D. Learnability Okay What's your choice? The correct answer is Letter C Actually, there are a lot of uh, criteria in selecting, uh, you know, uh, content, no? that uh, one can actually apply in the selection of contents or even in the incorporation of this topics or contents to our syllabus no so we have a variety of that so we have self-sufficiency we have significance we have validity we have interest utility learnability and feasibility since the question here is ruling out no? some of the topics that are no longer important or they are already trivial so definitely what you can actually do is you know, choose the most important one. So, talking about the significance of this topic or content. Just like now, uh, we are in the process also in the co-ed of actually uh, ruling out also some of the topics. That's why we try to revise, no? And we try to uh, pinpoint or to actually identify the most essential learning competencies or most essential topics that actually can be, uh, you know, learned without sacrificing the quality of education, no? in our college so in this uh, regard we are referring to this uh, answer as significance okay number 11 the social science professor attempts to develop some degree of synthesis among sociology cultural anthropology geology economics and government so which content organization is exemplified okay may i repeat the social science professor attempts to develop some degree 
of synthesis among sociology, cultural anthropology, geology, economics, and government. So, which content organization is exemplified? A. Fusion. B. Disciplinarity. C. Correlation. Or letter D. Broad Fields. Okay. The correct answer is Okay, broad fields. So, curriculum organization of the uh, curriculum content means, okay, the process of selecting curriculum elements from subject. So, the current social life and the student's experience, then you have to design and select curriculum contents appropriately so that they can form the curriculum structure and type. So, uh, a broad field curriculum is a structure for achieving educational outcomes that combines okay, related subjects into one broad field of study. So the purpose of which is to actually highlight relationships between subjects and to integrate the learning experience. Okay? So in this note, no, uh, so the social science professor would like to actually uh, you know, get a synthesis among the different social uh, uh, sciences uh, uh, areas that have been identified in sociology, cultural anthropology geology economics and government so what's the purpose highlighting the relationship between these subjects so it's broad fields or broad fields okay uh, content organization okay number 12 what could be the leading determinant of learning activities so well anyway you know when you are into the process of identifying this uh, learning activities so we have also to consider lots you know we are like needs experiences uh interests okay. abilities and among others so what could be the leading determinant of learning activities a experience must be within the context of your those needs experience that has stood the test of time experience that is culture oriented or experience must be managed by all of the learners concerned okay so the correct answer is experience that is culture oriented so actually there are we know what culture oriented is culture oriented is is actually based on the beliefs i mean uh, beliefs then the traditions the practices even history even education, even language, and among others. So, what could be examples of culture? Now, we're talking here about norms. Okay, these are actually informal and written rules that govern social behaviors. I mentioned already languages. Part of the practices are actually our traditions, our festivals, no? Then rituals and ceremony, just like what's being done in marriage or any other, uh, you know, uh, rituals like baptism then holidays pastimes food architecture and even other aspects so therefore when you are into uh, identifying or formulating learning activities so it should be culture oriented because you need to, uh, to take charge actually uh, understanding uh, talking about uh, culture of uh, other uh, group of individuals like for example if your group actually is a mixed group that has uh, an Indian, you have an Indian student, you have a Muslim student, you have a Christian student, and some other students, so definitely in providing learning experiences, it should not be, uh, or it should be an activity that would actually be neutral, uh, that uh, they focus, okay, on one particular type of culture, okay? So the answer there is letter C, okay? <coughs> Number 13. Which is an accurate concept of the need assessment. So when you're talking into need assessment, so what could be the purpose of assessment? Okay. So do you need empirical process for defining the desired outcomes of education? Or is it a curricular process that embraces assumptions about the type of curriculum? Is it a curricular innovation that is necessary and or desirable? or a curriculum specification about the type of curriculum so which is an accurate concept of need assessment so when you're uh, actually conceptualizing need assessment so what could be uh, what could it be what could be the you know the many 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 
app roots or sources that you can actually use ok what's your answer? the correct answer is ok an empirical process for defining the desired outcomes of education so the, what will be the primary purpose of this assessment is to identify which people are in need no? so how can you do that? For example, all affected persons, pregnant women, then uh, children, different types of needs. They have different types of needs actually. <coughs> so you have to determine the severity of their needs and pinpoint the type of assistance they require to ensure prioritized, focused, response planning. So when you're into empirical process, you have to actually get no much uh, information from uh, the people that you're actually uh, providing uh, and a help for assistance later so what you can do is to actually have a deeper you know understanding of this uh, people or groups of people as I mentioned a while ago uh, every people or group of people have different needs students have different needs in comparison with the parents and that of men in comparison with pregnant women or children in comparison with you know uh, children with special <coughs> needs so we need empirical process okay for defining the desired outcomes of education so definitely when you're talking about an accurate concept of the need assessment you have to go into the process of, you know as I mentioned huh? uh, look for uh, a deeper understanding of these groups that you wanted to study number 14 the following are Mrs. Garcia's objective and evaluation for her Makabayan class so what's wrong in her objective and evaluation so the objective is Demonstrate attitude consistent with responsible membership of society. And uh, <clears throat> during the evaluation, she tried to assess no? uh, tests or objective tests with true or false questions. So what's wrong with okay, uh, her objective and uh, an evaluation? So is it A, objective is incor incorrectly stated? The objective is uh, incompatible with evaluation procedures. Letter C, evaluation procedure is compatible with <coughs> the objective. Or letter D, evaluation procedure is closely related to the objective. So the answer here is actually very, very clear, no? <coughs> so you are ready? So the correct answer is... Okay, very clear, no? Evaluation procedure is incompatible with <coughs> objective. So, when you are actually trying to establish an objective that is demonstrating, to demonstrate is actually to prove something by showing examples of it, no? So, it's an evidence or something uh, proof that can actually attest to uh, what could be tested, no? So, in this note, demonstrate attitude no consistent with the responsible membership of society but the evaluation of the test uh, with true or false questions was used by Ms. Uh, or Mrs. Garcia so therefore the evaluation does not actually uh, <coughs> relate no to uh, the objective uh, that she uh, stated okay that's demonstrating attitude okay so the answer is number uh, 14 is letter C so number 15 as a curriculum planner at what phase of curriculum development do you address process evaluation okay in this note we are talking about process evaluation of the curriculum so at what phase of curriculum development do you address process evaluation if you are a curriculum planner is it just during planning <coughs> is it just uh, during implementation or is, uh, is it just uh, during designing or maybe all at, at all stages so as a curriculum planner at what phase of uh, curriculum development do you address the process or I mean address process evaluation <coughs> okay so the correct answer definitely is at all stages so we have uh, four major phases of curriculum development so plan and research then you have curriculum development then after that you have uh, you know professional learning and curriculum development then implementation later then the process is ongoing and cyclical so definitely all the stages is cyclical once started from plan it goes back always to the point of origin 
So, <coughs> a very important part of uh, curriculum implementation is that the teacher should consider carefully the order in which learning target should be learned. Because since uh, that is a cycle, no, it always starts with planning. And uh, after that planning, definitely at all stages, as mentioned here, it, there could be an evaluation. Then at the end of the evaluation, you can, you'll be able to find out what's lacking. Then you can actually recalibrate your plan. Go back to the planning activities again. Pre-planning activities. Okay? And so on and so forth. <clears throat> okay, number 16. As a teacher, which is not an accurate concept of educational technology. So now this is one of the most you know common errors the teachers usually are doing. We try to somehow prepare uh, you know technologies or powerpoints that are so attractive that somehow we uh, tend to fail. Teachers actually tend to fail, no? Or to actually satisfy what's the purpose of you know using educational technology. Definitely EdTech uh, would uh, surely serve as guide no, for uh, teachers to facilitate learning so you are sharing you know uh, knowledge or you're sharing actually uh, okay contents or not yeah knowledge or contents to your students so the powerpoint or even the animation that you are actually using would not uh, actually be uh, you know that as important no than content and that of knowledge but just the same because we wanted to actually catch or get the attention of our students to try to prepare our ad tech no? that perfectly no? so that the uh, students would actually listen to us so what could be uh, which is uh, which of the ABCD you know not an accurate concept of technology so integrated process while involving people procedure ideas and devices then use of educational methods and resources Art of responsibility to educational means use of machines tools for instructional purposes. <coughs> okay, so the answer there is very clear. Okay, that's the art of responsibility to educational means. So, uh, what does the Association for Educational Communications and Technology or AECT uh, defines? How does this organization actually define the EdTech? It should be the study and ethical practice of facilitating learning and improving performance by creating, using, and managing appropriate technological process and resources. So if you're just doing the ad tech, no, as an art of responsibility to the educational needs, so I think that's uh, among the four choices, this actually is uh, not uh, most essential, okay? So the correct answer is letter C. So which is exemplified by curriculum or correlated curriculum design? Horizontal articulation, horizontal continuity, horizontal sequence, or horizontal balance? So exemplified by what is or uh, which is exemplified by correlated curriculum design? So is it A, B, C, D, or C? or letter D okay the correct answer is <coughs> horizontal balance so when you are into horizontal balance this actually comes from a core correlated design that links separate subjects design in order to reduce fragmentation so subjects related to one another but each subject maintains identity it's sometimes called a holistic curriculum because it draws about or around themes and integration. So when you are into organization of contents according to the sequence and continuity of learning within a given knowledge uh, domain or subject uh, over time, you have to go into that kind of process. So when you are into a horizontal uh, articulation or balancing, you actually try to develop integration between subjects disciplines or knowledge domains so the correct answer there is horizontal balance number 18 which curriculum uh, design corrects the compartmentalization and fragmentation of the subject design a broad field b correlated c discipline d separate subject so when you are into designing or correcting design 
correcting actually the compartmentalization and frag uh, fragmentation of the subject design so which uh, of uh, the following uh, are you going to use broad field correlated discipline separate uh, subject curriculum design okay what's your choice a b c or letter d so the correct answer is correlated so when you're talking about correlation so or correlated uh, curriculum design this actually comes from a core as was mentioned earlier in the previous one curriculum uh, correlated curriculum design is actually linking separate uh, subjects or subjects that i mean subject designs in order to reduce fragmentation no? so subjects related to one another but each subject maintains identity so uh, referring also to the holistic development no or holistic uh, curriculum because uh, related to what was mentioned a while ago it grows around themes and integration of the different subjects so when you're into uh, uh, correlating subject design you're into the process of you know uh, reducing fragmentation and compartmentalization okay number 19 so which crucial question is answered by experience selection in curriculum process I may repeat which crucial question is uh, answered by experience selection in curriculum process is it the why of curriculum the when of curriculum the what of curriculum or the how of curriculum it's a crucial question about uh, experience or that can actually be answered by experience selection in curriculum process a a b c or letter d okay so the correct answer is the what of curriculum so curriculum as we defined is the educational design of learning experiences for the students so definitely it's very much important no? that you go into the process of understanding okay what topics are content to be taught the what of the curriculum actually is very very important no because curricular experiences include course content as well as learning activities so the selection and organizing or organization rather of curriculum of curricular experiences must also reflect the philosophy of the school that's why when you are into the process of identifying and organizing this uh, curricular experiences it should begin with the analysis of you know the curriculum objectives then after that we have to go into the process of uh, coming up with a logical approach you know of what to do then decide what to teach okay so the what of curriculum these are actually what should be taught or what should be uh huh, delivered to the students okay so number 19 is letter c so which is list use in authentic assessment so when you're talking about uh, list use in authentic assessment you know what authentic assessment is is actually looking into a perfect way of identifying uh, performance or performances of uh, the students so definitely what you can actually do is uh, you know uh, go into the process of identifying which, which could be now uh, which could actually uh, you know uh, evaluate or assess no the performance of the students okay a we have okay a performance b rubrics product of so letter c and our letter d take paper and a uh, pencil and paper test so least used so when you're talking into authentic assessment uh, you have to uh, go into the process of okay identifying such so which is not you know uh, which is the list use in authentic assessment okay so that's very clear the answer is letter D that is uh, pencil paper test okay number 21 there are six classes in science that need the same material so unfortunately the educational media center does not have enough so what the media director actually do or did was routing the materials to different grades so what kind of service is performed by the media director 
uh, chemia I repeat, there are six classes in science that need the same material. Unfortunately, the educational media center does not have enough. So the media director then routed the materials to different grades. So what kind of service is performed? A. Circulation of materials. Letter B. Photocopying service. Letter C. Bibliographic service. Or letter D. Mag on reels. Okay. So the correct answer must be letter A. So circulation of materials. So this is actually one way to get from one place to another place. So uh, definitely when you're actually into routing, you uh, try to actually you know circulate no? all of this uh, of the materials that are not actually sufficient no by means of uh, moving these materials from one to another area. So circulating can be one of the best way that the media director can actually do no, with regards to this process okay number 22 so miss katindig utilizes instructional uh, instructional materials okay for instructional technology for students to infer meaning from experiences in and to create personal model for explanation so what could be what could be what learning model did she, did she utilize so miss katindig utilizes instructional materials technology instructional technology for students to infer meaning from experiences in and to create personal model for explanation what learning model did she utilize? A. Discovery learning model B. Meaningful learning model C. Generative learning model or letter D. Constructivist Okay, so the correct answer is Constructivist So, uh, what do you mean by Constructivism? So, when you're into Constructivism, it's actually the theory that, uh, theory that says learners construct knowledge rather than just passively take in information so as people experience the world and reflect upon those experiences they build their own representations and incorporate new information into their pre-existing knowledge schemas so with regards to this question or you know what learning model did she utilize because uh, she wanted their students to infer meaning from experiences so it would fall under this constructivism so therefore letter d is the correct answer okay number 23 which it projects will be a good model for developing higher and complex thinking skills through the use of the library internet and web quest software development guided hypermedia project web-based projects or resource-based projects so again, which IT-based projects will be a good model for developing higher and complex thinking skills through the use of the library, internet, and web quest? Okay, the correct answer is, okay, resource-based projects or letter D. So what are resource-based projects? So the teacher actually steps out of the traditional role of being a content expert an information provider but instead she lets the student actually find their own facts and information so the teacher determines a topic for the examination of the class so this uh, resource uh, resource based uh, you know projects can be okay uh, is the best answer and with regards to the IT based projects that uh, you know uh, the teacher can actually uh, let or make the students uh, develop a good model for developing higher and complex thinking skills okay number 24 in a broad sense which of the following statements refer to the curriculum in a broad sense which of the following statements refer to the curriculum a pre-selected experience and learning opportunities for children and youth planned and guided academic experiences in the school formal and informal content and process under the spices of the school and letter the totality of the learner experience 
from the moment of his waking to falling asleep okay in the in or in a broad sense which are the following statements refer to the curriculum okay so the correct answer is uh, definitely the totality of the learner experience from the moment of his waking to falling asleep letter d so all the learning which is planned or guided by the school whether it is carried on in groups or individual or in the, or individually inside or outside the school is known as the curriculum so a uh, good example of this is the syllabus no? which is an outline and summary of topics to be covered in an education or training course so you have to remember that uh, you know the curriculum does not only focus no, on one particular aspect no, of uh, the learner development it's you know a holistic uh, process actually okay number 25 which is not a statement of a goal okay a understanding others developing mental and physical health interpret various um, uh, map symbols or letter d developing uh, basic skills okay which is not a statement of a goal so the correct answer is understanding others so what is an accurate definition of a goal so it's actually a way of living that shows the beliefs and opinions of a person or group of people it may somehow refer to a priority so a principle or belief that guides a person's life an ability created through a person's uh, a person or through a learning an experience something specific a person also would want to achieve so when you're talking about goals these are actually general guidelines that uh, explain what you want to achieve in your community so when you're understanding go, uh, others actually this is one very specific no uh, objective that uh, one can uh, usually develop so goals are broad statements no? about one uh, about how one would like to achieve something maybe for his uh, for the betterment of his own life or maybe for the betterment of the whole uh, community or if you're going to uh, cascade that to a higher level to the country or to the nation as a whole okay 26 uh, curriculum is a blueprint or pick of the school that includes experiences for home so curriculum is a blueprint or pick of the school that includes experiences for home okay where should this curriculum or for whom this curriculum should be you know uh, prepared is it for the teachers for the curriculum planners for the learners or the experts so definitely the correct answer are the learners so the correct answer is let us see the learners we are or we should be the learners so uh, who is the learner what is a learner it's uh it's actually someone who is learning about a particular subject or how to do something okay so we have to remember that learners really is uh, at the heart or are at the heart of uh, curriculum, uh, curriculum planning and development because what the teacher actually prepares is uh, intended for you know the holistic development of the learners so they play very important consideration no, in you know <coughs> formulating or designing a curriculum okay number 27 a curriculum is the sum total of a school's influence to a child's what is it for for his uh, personality behaviors attitude action so a curriculum is the sum total of uh, a school's influence to a child's a personality behaviors attitude or action okay the correct answer for this is okay behavior so in psychology behavior consists of an organisms external reactions to each environment so behavior somehow sometimes according to psychologists may be modified according to positive or negative reinforcements now from the organisms environment or according to self-directed intentions that's why it's very important when you are into uh, curriculum planning and development okay you need somehow to consider also this behavior according to the psychologist because uh, you know 
uh, every individual is unique and every individual actually uh, reacted differently even to the same situations okay number 28 so in planning and implementing curricula school makes its selection from what so what would be considerations in the planning and implementing the curricula is it a culture b nation c region d mass communication so in planning and implementing curricula school makes its selection from what a culture nation uh -huh, c region and letter d mass communication okay so the answer here is very very clear now if you apply the method or system of uh, what's this elimination process of elimination okay so the answer really is letter a culture so references made during lessons to culture and heritage will serve to continuously enhance a student's sense of belonging and also it will provide a deeper meaning and understanding to the lessons so many countries around the world now have developed new education institutes or institutes I, uh, yeah, the tama naman pala, to overcome this so culture-based education is the grounding of instruction and student learning in the values norms knowledge beliefs practices and language that are the foundation of a culture so culture is a way of life as we mentioned or as you have learned that in your uh, social dimensions and there are a lot uh, there are actually different elements of culture and there are also different characteristics of culture plenty of uh, plenty of that okay number 29 which one is not the component of the curriculum okay so not a component of the curriculum is it design objectives contents evaluation so which is uh, which one is not the component of the curriculum okay the correct answer is okay the design okay the design is not a content uh, is not uh, the component of one of the or rather the curriculum so actually when you are into the process of uh, describing the different components of the curriculum so any curriculum actually uh, consists of several components like objectives you have attitudes you have time and students and teachers needs uh, analysis classroom activities you have materials study skills uh, study skills language skills vocabulary grammar and assessment so and uh, not a component because we're talking about component of the curriculum here so designing uh, design is not part of the component so uh, when you're talking about component there are parts what's part what parts of the curriculum like lesson plan you have your objectives you have your uh, contents you have your assessment you have uh, assessment then uh, you have your uh, was this integration later then let, uh, the last part actually is the evaluation so design is not a part of the components okay so the correct answer is letter A number 30 so effectiveness of curriculum is best determined by what so when you're talking about effectiveness of curriculum what could be the best determinant okay is it the objective is it method is it design or is it evaluation okay so effectiveness of curriculum is best determined by so how would you be able that the determine uh, i mean the curriculum is effective so what are you going to do is then okay <laughs> the correct answer is letter d evaluation that is the process of measuring and judging the extent to which the planned courses programs learning activities and opportunities as expressed in the formal curriculum actually produce the expected results so when you're talking about how would you be able to find out if the curriculum that you have planned actually is uh, effective or not so you have to evaluate it right it's correct letter d evaluation number 31 so what is the arrangement of the elements or what could be the arrangement of the elements of curriculum Okay, or the arrangement of the elements of curriculum can be described as curriculum foundation, curriculum development, curriculum design, or curriculum construction. Okay? 
May I repeat, the arrangement of the elements of curriculum can be described as curriculum foundation, curriculum development, curriculum design, curriculum construction. Okay, 10 seconds. Okay, the correct answer is curriculum design. So, it's actually the planning period, no? When you are a teacher or when you are an instructor, you actually try to organize the instructional units no, for the course. So, when you are into curriculum designing, it actually involves planning, activities, then you need lots of readings, then lesson incorporation, then assessments uh, type that you actually can use no? along the course of the teaching and learning process. Okay, that you think would actually achieve the uh, educational goals. So, actually, there are different you know types of curriculum design, and we have learned that uh, the subject-centered design, then the learner-centered design, and that of the problem-centered curriculum design. Okay. Number thirty-two. The model of behavioral objectives of curriculum evaluation was. Okay, presented by who? Okay, this is somewhat, you know, uh, somewhat very descriptive, no? Because you need to, uh, you know, recall who among these people, like uh, Ralph Tyler, Helga Taba, Stafford Bing, or Chan Dewey actually serves as, okay, presents rather the model of behavioral objectives of curriculum evaluation. Okay? So, may I repeat? So, the model of behavior objectives of curriculum evaluation was presented by whom? Okay. So, I guess uh, I included this because you, I, I want you to know or to find out, no? Uh, who among them actually contributed a lot, no? That actually serves as the father of curriculum development. Okay. So, the correct answer is Ralph Tyler. So, he was, uh, uh, Ralph Tyler was an American educator. He actually worked in the field of assessment and evaluation, served also on or advised a number of bodies that uh, set guidelines that explains uh, of federal funds and influenced the underlying policy of the Elementary and Secondary Act of 1965 in America. So, he is also regarded as one of the foremost educators of the 20th century okay considered by many to be the grand old man of educational research okay uh, he is also often associated with the educational assessment and evaluation as well as curriculum theory and development hence he is also called as the father of curriculum development okay number 33 what forces what the, okay, the forces that affect the development of curriculum are what? Or what do we call the forces that affect the curriculum or the development of curriculum? Okay, is it the foundations? Is it the curriculum evaluation, the curriculum design, or the elements of curriculum? Okay, so what forces affect the development of curriculum? So in uh, developing a curriculum, so what are we going to consider? Okay. A, B, C, or D, the correct answer is, okay, letter A, foundation. So, in summary, the foundation upon which curriculum is based are educational philosophies. No? We have also historical developments. We have also psychological explanations and even societal or social influences. So, all of those mentioned actually are related or interrelated with each other. So, with the statement of objectives and related learning activities, curriculum should produce outcomes. So, we are familiar with the different major foundations of curriculum. Huh? We have behaviorism, we also have uh, cognitivism, then humanism, and uh, sociology and curriculum. Okay? So, those actually are foundations. So, we need to incorporate all of those major foundations, the behavior, cognitive, or talking about knowledge, then humanism, and the sociological foundations of curriculum. Actually, we can also include there the so-called philosoph philosophical foundations of the curriculum. I'm sorry. Okay, number 34. 
philosophical foundation of curriculum is concerned with what? Well, we are now into the philosophical foundations of curriculum. So, when you're talking about philosophical foundations, so it's concerned with what? Ideas, economy, history, contents. So, philosophical foundation of curriculum is concerned with ideas, economy, history, contents. Okay? The correct answer is ideas. So, the philosophical foundation of curriculum helps determine the driving purpose of education so, as well as the roles of various participants. So, while all other foundations propose to set goals of curriculum, philosophy presents the manner of thinking from which these goals are interested. So, ideas as defined actually is a thought, is a belief, is an opinion or plan. So, an example of this is, say for example, a chef coming up with a new menu item. So, that is a very good idea, or an original idea at that point. Or it can be an opinion or belief, something such as a thought or conception that is the product of mental activity. So, uh, philosophical foundations would not fall into this economy, history, contents, but more on ideas, okay? Number 35. Students' needs and interests are important in what aspect? Historical foundation, psychological, sociological foundation, and economic, fun, economical foundation, okay? So, talking about needs and interests are important in historical psychological, sociological, or economical, economical foundation. Okay. Do you have your choice now? So, the correct answer is, okay, letter B, psychological foundation. So, the psychological foundation actually will also improve the shaping of child's behavior and explain the various stages of development in children. So, it studies also the child's emotions like fear, like anger, like anxiety, etc. And these emotions play an important role in teaching and learning process. So, going back to the major, uh, you know, uh, foundations of curriculum, and behavioral foundations, and psychological foundations actually fall into that. So, uh, this psychological foundation would uh, definitely focus on those. Uh, mentioned earlier about you know uh, emotions about feelings and definitely with regards to this and the needs and interest can actually fall into place now with regards to how they are going to react to different situations no? i mentioned uh, earlier that you know a lot of uh, individuals all individuals actually are entirely different with one another and uh, you know uh, at times or most of the times even if uh, this group of uh, individuals have, uh, you know, uh, common purpose. Sometimes they uh, try to react differently, you know, with regards to uh, a certain or a specific situation. Well, anyway, humans as we are, when you're talking into needs and interests, then this could be one of the focus focuses rather of uh, curriculum developers as well. And the uh, psychological foundation really can, you know. Uh, look into this kind of okay uh, look into this kind of uh, needs and interests okay number 36 psychological foundations and curriculum help curriculum developers to understand the nature of whom okay so i think the answer here is also very very clear no psychological foundations and curriculum help the curriculum developers to understand the nature of Okay, the correct answer is okay, learners. So, the principles definitely are organized into five areas of psychological functioning. So, we have cognition and learning, we have motivation, we have social and emotional dimensions, context and learning, and assessment. So, the learners, as was mentioned also previously, are at the heart of the curriculum planners, or at the heart of curriculum development, really are the learners so the answer is letter b 37 so uh, subject center designs revolve around what learners contents social problems 
or social values so uh, very clear the answer here is very very clear so in a, I think it's a given question because when you're talking into the subject centered designs so we just actually just look at uh, look at the statement and from the statement actually the answer is uh, there already so it's a given answer no? so the answer there is letter B content so what could be characteristics of subject uh, learner uh, centered curriculum so learning really or learning subject matter is is an end and in itself an end no? so there is predetermined uniform standard knowledge practice and skills em emphasized emphasis is actually placed upon acquiring information or feature use and progress is measured by how much of the subject a pupil has learned so this subject uh, centric curriculum design revolves around a particular subject matter or discipline such as mathematics literature or biology and this model of curriculum design tends to focus on the subject matter rather than the student okay very clear okay number 38 which of the following is true about the taba method or the model or the taba method or the uh, taba model does it emphasize uh, administration or it had four learning questions or it had emphasized uh, features or it had uh, seven le uh, leading questions so which of the following is true about the TABA model or the TABA method okay A, B, C or letter D okay the TABA method actually emphasize on the teacher okay so Hilda Taba created a multi-purpose teaching model uh, that utilizes the use of multiple processes First is the listing, then grouping, then labeling, then regrouping and synthesizing. So, it is an inductive approach actually that focuses on the teacher. So, Taba, uh, Taba is a belief, uh, Taba, uh, the, uh, the Taba model or the Taba method actually is a belief that teachers are aware of the students' needs. Hence, they should be the one to develop the curriculum. And that is definitely true okay uh, now you are uh, <coughs> I think and I believe that some of you are teachers already and you're into the process of you know lesson planning and lesson planning is one part of the curriculum activities right and uh, in uh, the formulation or organize organization of your lesson plan you need to consider really what could be the needs okay of the learners that's why we know okay as the saying would always tell us no man the mother knows best so in our class the teacher knows best because we are actually in direct you know contact or contact the association with our students so we know who are who, who among our students are good or not or actually uh, good at academics or maybe needs uh, you know uh, reinforcement no in terms of uh, their uh, academic uh, performances okay number 39 so it provides educators teachers and curriculum makers with framework for planning implementing and evaluating curriculum in schools so is it psychology sociology philosophy or humanism so what provides educators teachers and curriculum makers with framework for planning, implementing, and evaluating curriculum in schools. Okay, 10 seconds. Okay, the correct answer is philosophy. So, we you know, philosophy is simply mean, or simply mean, love of wisdom. So, a philosophy of education actually is a statement or maybe a set of statements that identifies and clarifies the beliefs, values, and understandings of an individual or group with respect to education. And there are different types of educational philosophies no, that you are able to encounter along the course of curriculum planning and development. No? You have essentialism, you have perennialism, you have progressivism, you have social reconstructionism, existentialism, then behaviorism, constructivism, conservatism, and humanism. 
So all those educational philosophies that I've mentioned actually are uh, considered by all educators, whether you are in the private or in the public uh, sectors. Okay, as was mentioned earlier already, uh, we as teachers are <coughs> in direct contact with our students. So we know that uh, we we know what's best for our learners. So, with regards to uh, uh, teachers who are considered also as curriculum planners or makers, we need to go into uh, understanding also all of these educational philosophies that uh, form part. Okay in uh, curriculum planning and development okay number 40 philosophy is derived from two greek words no philo or feeling or philo philo from the greek word the uh, feeling and sophie or sophia so a feeling a feeling means to love what does sophia mean ah, with this name sophia so what does your you know name mean is it to manage to uncover to unveil or wisdom okay definitely simple as that no because uh, i mentioned that a while ago that uh, literally when you define uh, philosophy it is defined as the love of wisdom okay so the correct answer is wisdom like literally as i mentioned it means love of wisdom in uh, a broad sense philosophy is an activity people undertake when they uh, seek to understand fundamental truths about themselves, the world in which they live, and the relationship to the world and to each other. Okay? Number 41. Of all foreign educational systems, which of the following has the greatest influence on our educational system? Is it A, American educational system, British? Spanish Japanese educational system. So may I repeat of all foreign educational systems which of the following has the greatest influence on our educational system? Okay, so it's part of the historical uh, you know uh, development of the curriculum. So the correct answer is the American educational system. So in the industry philippines actually also prospered uh, during the american period no so like coconut oil mills cigar and cigarette factories road factories fishing uh, fish canning then you have also alcohol uh, small distilleries sugar centrals were actually established throughout the philippines during the american period so uh, anyway those uh, industries that were introduced by americans uh, you know help a lot no in uh, creating of uh, job opportunities or employment opportunities to our hockey uh, people so uh, one of the greatest contributions somehow no, of uh, <coughs> the american educational system that we have introduced is uh, actually far reaching which until now we are able to benefit from that because the americans uh, taught the filipino uh, people actually uh, their language and that is the use of uh, you know the, I mean English that's why in the Philippines you know, English is our okay second language and that's actually made us to the top no, of all other uh, English speakers in the world and I guess that could be the greatest contribution that uh, American uh, education actually has instilled among uh, Filipino people so uh, they try to actually uh, develop no uh, the Filipinos in educating and training them the science of self-government is uh, what we mean of the democratic principles of government and uh, actually little by little the Filipinos were introduced into the kind of uh, you know self-management until such time that we were, the Philippines was given liberation by the Americans you know, in July 4, 1946 okay so number 42 so uh, who among this uh, Reddit Charters William Kilpatrick Carl Graham uh, Franklin Bobbitt okay uh, said that objectives with corresponding activities should be grouped and sequenced so this can only be done if instructional objectives are clarified so according to this person objectives with corresponding activities should be grouped and sequenced 
and this can only be done if instructional objectives are clarified okay very charters uh, William Kilpatrick Harold Brown, uh, Franklin Bobbitt okay the correct answer is Franklin Bobbitt so he was actually a North American edu educationist he's also a university professor and a writer he is also the representative of the efficiency-minded thinkers who specialize in the field of curriculum. And according to him, curriculum should adapt to the needs of the individual. So, people should uh, actually not be taught what they will not use. Okay? So, what could be the steps for him? It should be analysis of human experience, then job analysis next. Then after that will be uh, create objectives. Then after creation of the objectives will be to select the objectives. Then plan for the individual. So according to uh, Frank and Bobby, people should not be taught what they will not use. That's why there should be practicality, you know, uh, or practical applications rather, of what teachers are actually teaching to his or her students. Okay. So number 43, for him, the listing of objectives and matching this with corresponding objectives ensures that the content or subject matter is related to objectives. So may I repeat, for him, the listing of objectives and matching these objectives with corresponding activities ensures that the content or subject matter is related to objectives. Okay? Is it very charters, William Kilpatrick, Franklin Bobbitt, or Harold Rapp? Okay? So part of the historical foundation of education, I mean of curriculum development. Okay? So the correct answer is very Wallace Charters. So he was actually a pioneering uh, a pioneering researcher in teacher education and curriculum development. So he tried to uh, actually contribute his scientific approach to curriculum development through the analysis of life activities. Okay? So his uh, significant contributions in several professional fields uh, actually would fall into the interest like audiovisual education, particularly the effect of motion pictures on children. Then uh, he also tried to uh, conclude that the motion picture is uh, a potent medium of education that can strongly influence student attitudes both positively and negatively. So somehow his legacy includes the enhancement and professional development of the lives of many of his students and colleagues. So notably charters selected William uh, Coley Edgar Gale, Rat Tyler, and his former PhD students become affiliated with the Bureau of Educational Research because of his contribution. So just like uh, Plato. Okay, Aristotle is one of the greatest students of Plato. So it's like uh, very charter so oh. that he was also able to produce uh, William Coley, Edgar Gale, Rat Tyler, and some other, uh, you know, forerunners of curriculum development, you know. Uh, that could be his greatest contribution somehow, okay? Number 44, so who believes that curriculum is a set of experiences and subject matter is developed around social functions and learners' interests? So Harold Brown, Franklin Bobbitt, William Kilpatrick, or Hollis Caswell. So who believes that curriculum is a set of experiences? Subject matter is developed around social functions and learners' interests. Okay, 10 seconds. Okay, the correct answer is Hollis Caswell. So, he was also an American educator who became an authority in curriculum planning in schools. So he directed surveys actually in curriculum practices in several school systems and he wrote several books on the subject. So he sees the curriculum as unorganized around social functions of things, organized knowledge and learners' interests. 
and he believes that curriculum is a set of experiences and subject matter is developed around social functions and learners interests okay number 45 which is not true about edward thorndike's uh, theory on connectionism is it a transfer of course because of previously encountered connections is it intelligence is a function of number of connections learned or is it learning requires both practice and rewards or letter d not all observed behaviors are learned so which is not true about thorndike's or edward thorndike's theory on connectionism okay 10 seconds okay the correct answer is letter d not all observed behaviors are learned so to state his uh, you know theory and connectionism is actually based on the principle of active learning so and it is also the result of the work of the american uh, you know psychologist no as we mentioned uh, as mentioned here at last on screen by edward thorndike so this work led to Thorndike's loss. Now, according to this loss, learning is achieved when an individual is able to form associations between a particular stimulus and a response. So it's actually like, you know, conditioning. So uh, he tried to propose actually or to propound the three basic laws of learning. So that's the law of readiness, the law of exercise, and the law of effect. Okay, so you have learned that. So if, no matter how much effort you're going to exert, if uh, the students are not ready to absorb, okay, what you're teaching, then nothing or no learning really can take place. And you know, as the saying would always tell us, uh, experience is the best teacher or repetition actually or exercise can uh, uh, help developing our minds to recall much of the information and the theories of effect definitely talking about conditioning if you have something that's uh, if you have something that uh, if you have learned uh, if you are actually learning something then you have something to okay to uh, there's also an outcome of that learning that you're actually uh, you know learning it's like talking about if there's a cause there's an effect if you learn if you study then you are learning but if you don't study then nothing to learn okay the number 46 association is made between a behavior and a specific consequence for that behavior and the type of learning that of course through rewards and punishments are ideas about what so association is made between a behavior and a specific consequence for that behavior and the type of learning that occurs through rewards and punishments are ideas about what operant conditioning, behavior conditioning, classical conditioning, or attitude conditioning. Okay, 10 seconds. Okay. Okay, the correct answer is operant conditioning. So, operant conditioning sometimes referred to as instrumental conditioning is a method of learning that employs rewards and punishment for behavior so uh, through operant conditioning an association is made between a behavior and a consequence whether negative or positive for that behavior so operant conditioning sometimes uh, referred to as instrumental conditioning as was mentioned is a method of learning now as already mentioned okay that uh, employs rewards and punishment for behavior that's why if uh, you have noticed you know, when a particular student is doing well we try to actually uh, reinforce him by means of giving him a uh, reward say for example someone uh, okay uh, tops uh, the quizzes or the examination or able to provide a correct answer we try to uh, give him a reward okay positively otherwise if he is not able to uh, you know provide a good answer or maybe uh, lowest of the quizzes administered or of the, or of the examination then that particular individual would feel not that uh, 
Well, well he is lousy or he is weak or the weakest among the class but <coughs> in this kind of uh, up his slide so when you're talking about uh, association made between behavior and a specific consequence definitely would fall under this kind of you know, situation that is what we mean of the upper land condition okay number 47 what are the steps involved in the modeling process in psychology okay so is it a attention retention motor reproduction motivation or is it uh, b motivation retention attention motor reproduction or is it c retention motor reproduction attention motivation or is it letter d motor reproduction motivation retention and attention Okay. What are the steps involved in the modeling process in psychology? 10 seconds. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Okay. <clears throat> so what you can actually do is uh, attention. So correct answer is letter A. We start with attention, retention, then motor reproduction, and motivation. So, when you are into the process of, uh, you know, doing this kind of modeling process, you need to engage your students actually into this kind of activity. <coughs> so, you have to get your attention. Then, uh, with the proper attention that you are able to provide, then you are going to, uh, uh, they must be able to actually retain the information that you are actually telling them. And after that, you know, uh, kind of uh, knowledge or, I mean, uh, ideas that were actually given to them, they are going to go into the process of, you know, motor reproduction, what are they are going to do. Then from that, they, are going, they, will be, uh, they would actually be more motivated to do into the process of doing things so actually there are different processes involved huh? <coughs> in the modeling process so step one is uh, problem identification if you go into research <laughs> then you have data collection then you have model development then model verification then optimization decision making then uh, communication to management then eventually later model implementation so in this note since we're talking to about modeling process we're going to you know, uh, to get their attention first, then they must be able to process the information that they have had, retain that in their minds, then produce that, then that could be their, you know, uh, motivation <coughs> to uh, perform or to do what are uh, okay, told to them by their teachers to do, okay? Number 48. So, how may the learning styles affect learning to an individual? Okay, so number 48. So, how may the learning uh, styles affect learning to an individual? So, it suits to his own pace in learning. <coughs> it is detrimental to his uh, learning interest. It matches with his enthusiasm to learn. Or it covers his capabilities to learn, unlearn, and relearn. So uh, we know very well what are the different learning styles. No? Common or very popular is the VARC uh, learning styles. No? <coughs> that would include the visual, auditory, read or write, and that of kinesthetic learning styles. Okay. So what could be or how may the learning styles affect learning to an individual? So the correct answer is... Okay, <coughs> it matches with enthusiasm to learn. That's why, you know, if you are visu visual, you are actually uh, this kind of learner who would like to learn no? uh, things, the means of what you are actually seeing. No? And you know, if you are auditory, you actually would like to uh, learn uh, something or things that you usually heard or just uh, hear no? through hearing or with the use of your hearing. Uh, <coughs> A ear rather then if you want to uh, actually uh, have a full grasp of what you need to learn you need uh, you know a read but a read or uh, write 
learner would like something that's written on the board and copied it okay and then if your kinesthetic is actually an application of the uh, different uh, body, uh, bodily exercises or the movements of your body <coughs> so uh, in this note learning styles can actually encourage students to reflect on their preferred ways of learning that's why you know as teachers uh, we are actually uh, <coughs> okay bombarded with lots of preparation no? like catering to the different uh, you know, learning styles of the students that are interested to us or that are actually within our class so how could you imagine if your class is composed of 40 students no? and these students actually are of different learning styles so how would you be able to actually adapt or you know reach out to these kinds of learners so it's very difficult in the part of the teacher okay so the answer for that is <coughs> letter C so number 49 which of the following activities people with logical mathematical intelligence do okay this is an application of the different learning uh, I mean uh, multiple intelligences of Howard Gardner so what do logical mathematical intelligence uh, learners usually do they are sensitive and capable to tackle the uh, I mean, to tackle deep questions about uh, human existence <coughs> they like to solve puzzles they draw the jigsaw puzzles red maps and daydream or these people actually uh, tend to okay tend to uh, <coughs> shy away from others so what is the correct answer mm, the correct answer is and they like to solve for a puzzles no? so logical mathematical intelligence refers to our ability or one's ability to think logically reason and identify connections and people with this kind of intelligence like Albert Einstein are good at working with numbers okay complex and abstract ideas and scientific investigations so we also think uh, in terms of cost and effect so the learning activities and project ideas playing with uh, playing math games like mancala dominoes chess checkers <coughs> and monopoly then searching for patterns in the classroom school outdoors and home are some of the activities that logical mathematical intelligence usually do okay number 15 this may be the last but not the least so which of the following activities uh, students with existential intelligence usually do so which of the following activities students with existential intelligence usually do <coughs> So they are very aware of their uh, environments. They are capable to tackle deep questions about human existence. These students learn through interaction. They learn or they need to learn and form concepts before they can deal with details. Okay? So you are given 10 seconds to have your answers. <coughs> okay the correct answer is okay they are capable to tackle deep questions about human existence okay <clears throat> sensitivity and capacity to tackle deep questions about human existence such as the meaning of life why we die or why do we die you know die is a reality but you know a lot of people are asking why is it that early for example you know, a young man or a, wa a young woman or a baby actually die okay then also how did we get there and the skills actually are into reflective and deep thinking uh, design abstract theories if you are into existential intelligence so if you are an intelligent man or individual in terms of you know this existential no, aspect so 
finally, one of the best ways to enhance a child's natural existential intelligence is to allow for, for curiosity. <clears throat> That's why, you know, as Walt Disney once said, we keep moving forward, opening up new doors and doing new things because we are curious and curiosity keeps leading us down new paths. That's why, you know, when you, are, when you, be, when you will be teaching, uh, you will be able to encounter a lot of students now that are very curious asking you a lot of questions so please do not uh, hesitate to answer them or to deal with them because uh, if not no, you will be losing the chance of actually uh, you know developing the curiosity of the students now that are actually interested to you so with that Oh, that's all. So thank you for listening. So good luck and God bless, you know, to everybody. So what I can actually uh, uh, say or what can I actually uh, tell you is that since you are in the process of reviewing, you know, review is good. But uh, what I can actually, uh, you know, advise to you is stay focused. If you're into the process of reviewing, so do, uh, do the best that you can. So reading can actually help you, you know, uh, recall lots of uh, men, uh, some concepts or ideas. But that would not be enough. You need to repeatedly read it because uh, that would help you, you know, actually uh, develop your sense of, you know, thinking and creativity. And you should never forget to pray because uh, <coughs> knowledge is useless without the intervention of God. So with that, good day to everybody and thank you and God bless.